Good morning and welcome to the next in my series of videos on why you should take classic shots that have been taken a million times and compare your shots to the ones that have already been taken that have wowed you in all of the books so that you can become a better photographer. Not the snappiest of title, probably needs a little bit of work. But this morning you find me in Blee Tarn in Great Langdale in the Lake District. It's my first pre-dawn adventure in this new reboot of my photography hobby uh, and I'm quite excited about it. Um, I've come to Blee Tarn because the classic shot here, uh, you can see the Langdale Pikes in the background, uh, you've got side pike here uh, and the classic shot here tends to be sort of mid-autumn through to mid-spring on a windless morning when the uh, the, the lake itself is uh, completely flat and you get all of the reflections built in there. Uh, as with my last video, if you saw that at Bassenthwaite, uh, the wind is not playing ball this morning. It is quite windy, you can see behind me, and hopefully you can hear me properly. Um, but I've come out anyway, just to um, scout the area and see what I can actually do. The sky is clear this morning and I'm expecting sunrise in about oh, 20 minutes or so. Um, the idea, hopefully, is that even though I've got ripples on the lakes and I won't get many reflections, is that as the sun rises that way, the pikes behind me will start to be lit and even though the, uh, the tarn itself will be sort of in shadow, uh, that there should be enough atmosphere around to be able to create a reasonably good image. Uh, it's possible that um, I'll chuck on my 10-stop grey grad filter to try and soften out the, 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 the activity on the lake. I won't get the same sort of reflections that you see in the classic shots, but um, I should get some kind of, I don't know, painterly effect maybe of the, uh, the mountains sort of reflected in the surface of the lake. Not ideal, but again, in the interests of learning, I think this is going to be a good, uh, a good exercise in what's available when you haven't got the ideal light. I think if we waited for the ideal conditions, not only would we get out about 10 times a year, but when we did, uh, we'd be joining a queue of about 150 photographers looking for this particular, looking for this particular image. Um, in the absence of reflections, uh, pure reflections, again, as at Bassenthwaite, struggling a little bit to find some foreground interest. Uh, there are, let me show you if I can, there are lots and lots of loose rocks along the shore. Uh, there, to that side, um, there's a couple of big ones over there, uh, which I thought I might put in the foreground, which would be directly in a line uh, with the pikes here behind me. Um, and I thought that might be an interesting, an interesting balance between the pikes and the rocks in the foreground. But what I'm going to start with, what I'm going to do to start with is down here, there's a little line of small stones and then a couple of bigger stones here in the foreground and I'm going to put them in the foreground. It looks as though that little line of loose stones might provide an interesting lead in. The one on the right might provide some balance to that and then the pikes appearing in the middle of those. And then of course we've got the, um, if you look at your rules of composition, um, uh, triangles and diagonal lines tend to be quite interesting. So we've got the pikes actually, it's, 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 it's a ready-made composition. We've got the, the, the sloping line of the trees on one side and then the slope of, of side pike coming down the other side. So hopefully I'll get a couple of shots here uh, that I'll put up, assuming they're worthy of being put up. Obviously if I take a, there's always a risk with these videos. Um, when you do the video before you take the shot that um, the video will be completely redundant because the shots are useless. I suspect a lot of the time some of the photographers that I look at on YouTube are taking the photographs, having a look at the photographs, being happy that the photographs are good and then shooting the video as though they were about to take the photographs. But I may be doing them a huge injustice. They may be just a lot more confident in their compositions than I am. <laughs> That's probably it. I do apologise to all of those other YouTubers out there who are doing a much better job than me. I did come here yesterday to recce the place in the afternoon. The light was horrendous. It was just, it, it started off beautiful in the morning and then it just got grey and dull and completely lifeless and really windy and there wasn't really much to do at all. But I did spot a couple of other things that once I'm done here and the light has come up a little bit more, uh, I'm going to have a go at. Uh, and I did notice on the other side, there's a, as a, on one of the approach paths uh, to the town, there's a beautiful S bend in, in, in the lake. 
sorry, in the path as you come down toward the lake. Um, and as I turn back to look back along the path toward uh, Side Pike, there was a tree on its own standing in a nice position near the near the uh, near the S bend. So I'll go and have a look at that and see if I can make something of that before the footpath is crawling with people. I've never seen the Lake District so busy as it has been for the last couple of weeks. Um, obviously the pandemic and staycationers and people who can't go abroad uh, seem to be coming here in their droves. But I've, I've never seen it so busy. I came up here at five o'clock this morning and every single parking space along the way uh, seems to be taken over with cars and, and, and camper vans. And, and it's, it's wonderful to see. It is absolutely wonderful to see people realizing how privileged we are to have this, you know, without having to endure Ryanair and EasyJet. The other airlines are available to abuse you and exploit you. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'll wait for another 15 minutes or so and see what I can do with this shot and hopefully I will be able to show you something um, something that doesn't require the ideal composition with a completely flat and windless lake but something that we can still use as part of the learning process. So now that I'm back at home and I've had a chance to look at some of these images I wanted to do a bit of a postscript this being a, a learning experience for me and, and hopefully for you, I wanted to go through some of the images that I took that I mentioned I was going to take or was going to try while I was at the lake and show you why I think they didn't work. Because out of all of the, the shots that I took uh, this morning, there's really only one that I think is my favourite of the day and, and the others are either close runners or, or really not very close at all and I just wanted to mention why I think they didn't work at all. The first uh, that I wanted to show you was I mentioned that I was going to stick on the uh, grey grad filter and take a long exposure to see if I could calm down some of the activity on the water. Now that's a, a really nice technique for waterfalls uh, or if you're doing, you, you've all seen the sort of the fine art shots where um, uh, you want to take away the um, the motion of waves crashing on rocks or you've seen jetties that are that appear to be hanging in a misty midair kind of thing. That's how they do it. They, they, they put a, a dark filter on, they open the shutter for, you know, 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes, whatever it is, and then all of the motion in the waves, all of the motion in the, in the sea gets blurred away. I thought that might work here. Uh, let me show you what happened when I did that. Uh, I got this image here. It didn't have the effect that I wanted and it's done worse actually. Um, not only do I think the rocks sitting in the water looked slightly weird, um, it didn't create any kind of painterly effect uh, with any kind of reflections at all. The water was, was just too, too active. So all the effects, all, all the reflections got dissipated. But I think it does worse because the star of this show here is the, the pikes in the background with the sun lying on them, the early morning sun lying on them. Because of the effect of the long exposure on the water, I think for me that distracts completely. It, it, it creates a sort of a weird effect that you spend a lot more time looking at the water thinking what, what the hell is going on there and your eye is sort of blocked completely and you don't get the opportunity to look up to the pikes and enjoy, you know, what the light is doing up there. So I think that didn't work at all. Uh, the second thing I mentioned was the there were a couple of big stones further on down the shore and I was going to line them up and I thought that that would make a more uh, balanced image. Uh, let me just show you what happened with that. In my view, because I was able to put the, the pikes in the middle of the frame, that kind of worked. The big stones, these large stones have completely distracted from the impact that the pikes have in the background. Not only that, but because they're surrounded by all of those other little stones, which I hadn't really noticed when I wrecked the, uh, the lake the previous day, I hadn't really noticed all of those other small stones. It's just messy. There's far too much going on. 
and your eye doesn't know where to land and there's nothing that brings you back. It's almost two images, one very bad image of some stones and then one potentially good image of a mountain in the background, but what, what you know, with nothing to bring you there, the image is just completely unsuccessful. I thought I'd show you that and, and, and give you my view as to why that didn't work, given that I mentioned it. Which brings me to, to, to my favourite image. I mentioned in the video that I had lined up the exposure with two sets of, of stones. Uh, one on the left, which was that longer line of, of stones that was suggested might be a pleasing directional to the, to the pikes in the background. And then there was other stones on the right hand side. Uh, and I think I showed you those. Let me show you the image that I created with that. Uh, and this is without the 30 second blurry watery stuff. and, and Again, no reflections, so the image is quite unbalanced. Um, there's nothing really to connect the two parts of the image. But I think, you know, the, the key problem with this is that the stones on the right-hand side don't really do anything. And by including them in the image, I've shoved the Langdale pikes that are being lit out of the center of the frame and over toward the left. And then you've got side pike on the right sort of sticking up to the same height. And then you've got some other stuff going on there as well, further on out to the right. So actually including those stones on the right really didn't work at all. And it also meant that the distance between the closest of the stones, both on the right and the left, and the bottom of the frame, it's not just negative space. There's, 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 there's a sort of, it, 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 I guess it's about a fifth of the image at the bottom where nothing is happening at all. You've just got some waves. Um, and that's almost blocking your eye from even getting to the start of the image, never mind leading it's, it's, it's leading your eye the whole way through to the back. So I think that didn't work at all, despite my early optimism. Which brings me to my favorite image. What I actually did, I took that image and I cropped it. And I took out not only the stones on the right hand side, I took out side pike as well. What you're left with is this, the, the downward slope of side pike and the trees on the left hand side then become a much stronger lead in and then the pikes bathed in sunlight are moved slightly to the right of the off center of the image. And I think it creates much more balanced image. I'm not entirely sure. I, don't, I still don't think it's a successful image. It's certainly not a portfolio shot. You wouldn't be hanging this on your wall but I'm not unhappy with this image. I'm happy to um, I'm happy to save it. I'm happy to post it, and I'm happy to show it to you now. I hope you enjoy it. Please let me know what you think. Let me know whether you agree with any of my criticisms of the earlier images. So I hope that was useful, and I will see you next time.